So you are Oxy on YouTube, Oxygen Thief, which uh, I'll, I'll remind me to ask you about your name. But first, I could just briefly go over who you are as a YouTuber or, you know what, could you give us a brief summary of your channel and what you do on YouTube and in the game of War Thunder? Sure. Um, well, basically at this point, I want my channel to kind of... Uh be somewhat of kind of like a beginner friendly kind of place so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm aiming to go through every tree uh, starting with uh, tanks because that's what I'm currently uh, the most familiar with and just sort of go through every vehicle and kind of explain how it's best used or rather how I think it's best used and um, to try and teach people about uh, just how things in the game kind of function like I like doing kind of beginner guides and just helping people out so I've been um playing the game for a really long time and at this point uh, apart from most of the new vehicles or the new top tier vehicles that have come out I've got everything in the game unlocked and spaded so to kind of keep myself kind of interested in playing the game I thought well what's better to do than just to go through every vehicle and kind of help people while while I do it and so I just want to be like a teaching tool really for people well that is well, that is exactly the impression that I got from watching your videos. And on top of all that, I'll note the obvious, and that's that you have a nice, warm, friendly demeanor. Uh, you don't talk down about uh, the game or about the people that play it, which is nice to see because it can, it can be pretty tempting to get negative about things sometimes. And that kind of gets contagious. And... What else can I add to what you said? I think that's just about it. You are a delightful person to listen to and to learn from on YouTube, and even more experienced players can learn things from your, your video guides. So I've greatly enjoyed that, which is one of the reasons I'm glad I have you here today. Thank you. So <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so getting started off, I'll probably do more talking than I need to and then just try and encourage you to to open up once we get into the the story time but first off i have to ask what's with the name oxygen thief or oxy well i can vaguely remember where i came up with it i think i was this was back when i was in school and i was trying to think of a name i don't think it was for war thunder i think it was for um like a forum or something i can't can't remember exactly but um i was thinking of kind of what's like a a nice kind of word to say, and the first one I thought of was oxygen, and um, cause like I don't know I thought I th I think I was at a point where I thought the X was cool, so I was like okay that's a that's a nice word, and um, I was just kind of playing around with it in my head and not doing the work I probably should have been doing, and um, it just came to me oxygen thief, and I, I looked it up and I heard it was like actually like a phrase that that people use, and um, I think it's generally uh, somebody who talks too much. So, like, they're, they're kind of thieving <laughs> oxygen, basically. <laughs> what a coincidence. Carry on. <laughs> so I thought, that's pretty perfect. And then when I was making um, a name for War Thunder, I was like, that works as well, because it's like, um, it's just a nice name. And it's I guess it's it's kind of memorable. I like to think it's, it's kind of memorable. And it's also like, uh, I don't know, like when you kind of knock someone out, it's like, you know, you're you're killing them, so you're taking their oxygen. Well, that's kind of cool. I like that. So yeah, it, it just kind of came to me. Well, I would say randomly, but it took a, it took a while to get um, to get the name. But uh, yeah, I like it. I like the name. Noxy is just a, a shortening of it. In terms of introductions, now that I've asked that burning question, uh, my name is Casey. I run the Toshio Thunder YouTube channel and the Discord, and. Uh, you are called Oxy. Would you like to share your first name with the people back home? Sure. Uh, my name's Tom. Lovely. Tom. That should be uh, pretty easy to relate to. If you don't mind, I'll call you Tom for the rest of the interview, if I can remember to. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, Tom. <laughs> well, as I like to say, you were born and then things happened. Tell us about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um... I'm 21, and um, I live uh, in Kent, which is sort of uh, southeast England. And um, I've moved around uh, a fair bit. I used to live in um, a town called uh, Faversham, which is quite a quintessential English market town. 
and um, I think I moved houses about seven times for for whatever reason while there. And um, it was sort of, I guess, almost close to being like the perfect kind of place to to grow up. So there was like a couple of attractions, and like a swimming pool, a couple of museums, a theatre, huge park, and just kind of loads of places to kind of explore when I was younger. So I did I did a lot of that. And um, now I live in uh, Margate, which is like a kind of a coastal town, like a, again quite quintessential. It's like um, when you think of uh, like an English seaside town, it's it's pretty much where I live now. And so yeah, it's it's pretty nice. Sort of uh, similar to Torquay, perhaps. I I'm not familiar. With that is sorry. Um, sorry, that's a that's a made up town. That's a Faulty Towers reference for you. Uh, Oh, is he? for you fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it for, for probably about 12 years, I want to say. I used to watch it with my dad growing up, but I just I haven't gone back to it. And I really should, actually, because I remember really liking it. But I think I was probably at an age where like a fair bit of it went over my head. So yeah, I should definitely give that another go. Yeah, I can tell you that a lot of the comedies that I sort of enjoyed as a younger man or as a kid, uh, now I find even more hilarious by those people that are just... Mm-hmm. Just really good at different kinds of comedy all wrapped into one. Um, but I guess that's sort of completely off subject. <laughs> now, what are we talking about? <laughs> you, you you lived in a nice, pleasant coastal town, which is something I can relate to. Uh, tell me more. Yeah, well, um, I suppose I should kind of get into um, how I really got into the game growing up. Because I've, I've always sort of been interested in... Uh, mainly uh, planes. I think I mainly came to War Thunder for the planes. Cause when I, well, when I first started playing, it was only planes. Um, but I had a couple of uh, family members um, who were in the RAF, and um, but they were they were sort of mechanics. They weren't pilots. I had um, a great uncle who um, serviced uh, Wellingtons in the war, and um, in the First World War, he was also a mechanic. And he's actually got this um, really nice old uh, manual from like nineteen. Oh, I don't know. It's like Start, started like just before the war started, World War One, and it's got loads of diagrams of aircraft and their in, like internal components and things. And I, I used to kind of enjoy going to visit my relatives and just sort of looking through that. And I thought that's that's really cool. Um, but I think I've always just kind of liked aircraft. I, I like kind of seeing them like up in the sky. And I used to play a lot of games um, with aircraft in them growing up. I played uh, uh, Wings of War, which is sort of like a World War One uh, biplane kind of game. And I really liked that. And I remember once, um, so I used to see my dad on a weekend and we'd usually kind of go out and do something like go metal detecting or there was this place where we'd used to go and uh, dig for like old Victorian bottles um, because my dad collects them and I thought that's kind of cool. But um, we found out that we we couldn't go because there was some like kind of disease outbreak there. And I was obviously like, I was was a kid, I was pretty upset. And my dad (laughs) kind of got this game out of the cup and he threw it at me. He was like, just play that. And it was called uh, Secret Weapons Over Normandy. And that was probably one of my favorite games <laughs> growing up. I went all the way through your that. Your dad was just like, <laughs> your dad was just saving that for the perfect yeah. occasion. He's like, right then, now's the time. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Nice. I I recognize the games you've been mentioning. I really enjoyed that uh, that World War One. Mm. I can't remember if I played the same one, but... Playing biplanes and triplanes yeah. and working your way into some some late World War One designs that start to look a little bit familiar to what we see in the early ranks of War Thunder. Uh, it kind of makes you, well, just think about the potential for a War Thunder style World War One combat Definitely. game. But um, <laughs> moving into secret weapons of World War Two, you start to recognize a lot of vehicles we see in our mutual game as well. Um, and I'm just really proud of your dad for <laughs> for seizing that opportunity. <laughs> Was that his way to 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 just kinda to to casually gift you with neat stuff like that? I think so, yeah. It was just sort of like, well, I've got him for the whole day. We're not doing anything. I'll 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 stockpile some stuff to give him when we can't go out and do anything. So it was pretty tactical, pretty tactical, my dad. There, but I'm I'm glad I'm glad that he did that because I think that kind of snowballed the whole thing. But um, interest, interestingly, actually, the thing that mainly got me into War Thunder was I actually went to college with the guy who started uh, Think, and um, he was uh, you know telling me about the game, 
and I, I think he was uh, like a year above me or cute few years above. We, uh, I think we were doing the same course, which was game design. And uh, I knew one of his friends would kind of talk sometimes. And he was kind of uh, telling us about this game War Thunder. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll definitely go and give it a go. And um, I did. But at the time, I had this laptop that would crash if I tried to load into some realistic battle maps. And um, it ran War Thunder about 14 to 17 FPS on ultra low. And I grinded my way to the first meteor on that thing, uh, which was quite quite the challenge. But I still I still really enjoyed it for whatever reason. I just I just loved the planes and just kind of going through the whole tree, and I, I really liked it. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Grinding through essentially the entire British aircraft tree <laughs> on fourteen FPS. Yep. <laughs> I'm afraid you have a terminal case of, uh, of was it British tenacity? <laughs> <laughs> you can just hear Winston Churchill in broken MP3 encouraging you in the background. <laughs> that's that, that's great encouragement for people that are still running or who, who have come into the game on a potato PC or, or a console that just doesn't get the kind of love and war thunder that that a high spec PC gets, you can still make it. You just gotta buck up, keep a stiff upper lip. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, All definitely. Right. All right, Ox- or sorry. All right, Tom, tell us some more. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I sort of uh, War Thunder was probably a, a pretty decent escape for me at like the time because I I started playing really, really early. I think. Um, I can't remember exactly when, but I was playing at a point where realistic battles didn't have a matchmaker. And I remember my first realistic experience was spawning in the F2A, like I think Thatcher's F2A, and getting strafed on the runway by a 262. And I thought, probably avoid this. Probably just stick to arcade for now. Um, but I I still really liked it, even though I had kind of no um, FPS and uh, the textures were all a bit kind of scuffed. But I really liked just... I think the progression because I'd never really played a game like that with like a tech tree and kind of looking later down the tree and thinking I really want to get that I really want to get that and um, I, I liked the progression I liked kind of uh, going through and spading stuff so I think I'm, I'm a person that kind of likes um, finishing things and uh, so War Thunder was like the perfect game like that because I was interested in, in the subject matter like the aircraft and also it kind of adhered to my in, like my inherent kind of need to to get stuff kind of finished and kind of get stuff neat i guess so seeing all the stuff um spaded was just really really nice so um you know i'd come home from school and just kind of play a good few games and you know i was having like kind of like a bad day like i'll go through i was like what what can i kind of uh finish unlocking today and it kind of helped me a lot i think by doing that and genuinely even though it was borderline unplayable on some maps. I still really enjoyed it because it felt like more of um, I don't know. It felt more just satisfying to to get have a really good game while uh, not really having any <laughs> FPS and not really knowing what's happening most of the time. But um, yeah, I just sort of couldn't put it down, and I mean, <laughs> all these years later, still can't. That sounds strikingly familiar to a lot of the gaming that I did when I was a younger man. And it's almost like just you get this passion that sort of you don't even consider it, but it grows as you invest in this this video game project that you just you just look forward to coming home, getting on the computer and just investing time in this thing uh there's something about that in being a young man i think that 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 especially younger guys you know i can't really speak for women so i'll let them chime in in the comments section below (laughs) which will help to get this video shared with more people (laughs) two or three (laughs) women could actually see this um definitely but for for a young man it's you have this like passion for projects you know you just want to pour yourself into something and it doesn't even necessarily need in fact it's even better if it's not something really like meaningful or important 
because then you can you know you can put it down and go live your life or you can you can you're allowed to fail <laughs> and you're always able to respawn yeah. later so <laughs> i guess i'm not sure where i was going with that statement other than i can definitely relate to that and it really speaks to the people who again are are on some some crummy pc or some less than great internet you don't have to have the most success in a game especially war thunder you don't have to be the most skilled person or even understand how to do well uh there's really this idea with games like war thunder that it becomes a project it becomes a campaign that you just keep mm. on plugging away and eventually you can become one of the one of the well-known fixtures of a community you can inspire other people and uh, you can get really good at the game, which I think are all fair things to say about yourself. Yeah, um, it's taken a really long time to, uh, I guess, get kind of good. I always, I always feel bad saying saying that um, I'm not very good at kind of saying that I'm I'm good at stuff. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's taken a really long time. And initially, I, I mean, I, I mainly do uh, tanks now. Uh, the reason for that was that I, at one point when I was actually getting a new computer, I got a uh, 4K monitor. Um, so I, oh, I was planning to do kind of recordings and stuff. But um, at the time, uh, the UI didn't support 4K. So what actually happened was your um, crosshair was about, like, I don't know the exact dimension, but it was absolutely tiny. You could barely see it. So basically, I was just trying to play aircraft and aiming blind, and it was just... I just couldn't do it. It was really difficult, and I just thought, you know, I'm not. This isn't doing me any favors. I'll I'll switch to to tanks. Give them a go. And um, even though I still love aircraft, and I think I'd probably say I like aircraft more than tanks, just as sort of vehicles. I um I kind of got into the the tank gameplay loop. I really liked it. So even when I kind of well, uh, it's it's supported now. The the crosshairs actually um as it should be. So I have been getting back into playing slowly, but um. I've just kind of been stuck on tanks ever since, and and I used to be uh, very like very good at, at aircraft. I used to do kind of the first one v one duels, like the old gladiators, and um, that kind of thing. But I just sort of never really got back into it because by that time, I think I'd I'd made like a fair few friends playing, and they all mainly uh, stuck to ground forces. And playing air obby on your own, kind of over and over again, it, it kind of gets a bit. Um, disheartening, you know, when you've you've climbed up really high, and, you know, you've played in kind of your perspective well, and you've played your plane right, and you know your whole team are dead, and this aircraft above you, and it's like, well, you know, I, I can't do this on my own, so it kind of grinds you down a little bit. So I just sort of stick to tanks now, mainly, unless you know I'm playing with somebody who likes aircraft, in which case I will definitely go and give them a go. But um, yeah, I, I really just kind of enjoy the gameplay. I mean, there are, I guess some problems with it and like different pockets of BRs and balancing and repair costs and that kind of thing but I tell you what I think that one of the main reasons why I've been able to stick with the game for so long is that I somewhat enjoy playing everything you know I like bombers I, I even like naval forces and they're like you know I like low tier not so much high tier but I'll still I'll still play it and have a good time so I think if there's kind of like a problem somewhere, like if there's a particularly OP vehicle, I just kind of try and play around it. And um, I think the trick with that to kind of being in a good mindset while playing the game is to have as much fun in every aspect of it as possible. So if there is kind of an area that's um, kind of broken, like say if, you know you, you want to play helicopters, but you know every time you spawn one in, immediately get blatted from across the map by one of the AAs, I I just won't kind of try and engage with it because it'll just kind of bring me down but so that's kind of i think why i've managed to stick with it for so long but also you know it's it's obviously not fair to kind of put that perspective on other people because if someone's only really interested in one thing and that particular thing just happens to be something that's not particularly balanced you know you, you can't really say oh we'll just play something else but i think i'm quite lucky in that regard that i managed to find enjoyment on kind of all aspects of the game yeah that makes a lot of sense and I would hazard to guess that the majority of the players of War Thunder have played several dozen, if not more, vehicles that they've spent some time in and jump between things when things aren't working out so well. And one of the clear advantages 
and disadvantages of a game like War Thunder is its vastness. If part of it's just terribly broken and not functioning properly, <laughs> there's so many other parts to jump over to. And I'd, I'd just like to take the opportunity to encourage people to try different game modes, try different vehicles, and, and just explore uh, for a while for a sense of wonder at what the game can be. But, but you mentioned that you were in school for game design. Um, mm -hmm. What happened with that? Um, well, it was a two-year course um, for, for game design, and it, I really enjoyed it. There were some really nice people there, and obviously it being uh, quite a niche uh, subject, everyone kind of had a lot of common ground initially, and it was just, it was a really nice place to kind of gel with people. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And um, the main thing we kind of did was uh, a kind of, you know, it was like analyze particular games and then kind of go into um, structure and how stories kind of work and how... Uh, like all kinds of tiny little um, just parts that make the whole thing come together. And I really liked that because they kind of encouraged you to um, kind of stick to what you enjoy. Like if you like the art, you know, you could kind of uh, be more creative with how you present um, the tasks and stuff. If it was more writing, you know, you could focus on that. And I like that aspect as well. And um, so I went in for, I think it was three days a week we were in for that course. And um it was a uh, two-year course, but I ended up only doing one year because uh, I think the environment uh, wasn't really that great for me. I had to get a train, then walk about 40 minutes to get there, and that was kind of a bit draining every morning. But, um, it was kind of a bit too bit too loud for me. I like, quite like quiet spaces, and I think after a while I, I kind of just uh, couldn't really um, uh, engage with the environment as much. But I got um, a... Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called... It was like a level three degree, and I got um kind of a half half grade, I think, because I only did one year. But I got um I got something out of it, which was pretty pretty nice. But I, I really enjoyed it. It was a really good um course. And I think it was you know probably the best one I, I could have picked. And it does kind of help in um understanding kind of problems with with War Thunder actually, like uh, how it all works internally and kind of the code and things and how things kind of get tied up. And it, it all kind of comes together, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, and it, you know, there's so many voices that that rise up with with all kinds of issues, especially regarding video games in general, and they are an extremely complicated project involving art, writing, very complex layers of programming, monetization, marketing, and all kinds of structure that yeah it's interesting just to get into some of the things that go into this massive artistic interactive project we call video games so that's mm -hmm. I, I think that your time was well spent there so to say i agree that your time was well spent and as a fellow college dropout i i applaud you <laughs> uh for the <laughs> for the bravery <laughs> of quitting uh, <laughs> i also encourage people to uh to stay in school and do your best mm. up to the point where you realize you're wasting your time and then just get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely, have you stayed in touch with any of the the people? You obviously, there's the guy who founded the Think Squadron. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I got mm. a baby girl here who wants my attention as well. Um, so, are you still in touch with some of the people from your college no days? No and uh, what is your what is your social life right now? Obviously, there's War Thunder and YouTube, but uh, uh, maybe you could tell us a bit about the friends you've made over the years and and how you keep in touch. Sure. Um, I'm in touch with a few of them. They've always sort of moved on to better things. Now, like, I'm a best friend from college now. Um, he was always kind of like a quite like a passive guy. And I think he's like a prison guard now, which is kind of a, a big leap. Would never expect that. But we, we talk sometimes. But... Um, He's anyone I, I mainly keep in contact with. Um, my social life isn't probably as uh, colourful as I, it probably should be. Um, I don't really uh, go out very much. It, it's not it's not really my thing, kind of being outside and being quite uh, crowded places. Like I'm not really a big fan, but I do have a couple of really good friends. Um, there's one, probably my best friend, uh, called, called uh, Jacob. Uh, it was really interesting how I met him, actually. Um, I'm going to take a drink of water quick. 
throat gets really dry quite quickly. Um, <clears throat> but I was, uh, I think I was going to an appointment in um, a town kind of a, not too far away. And uh, I was coming back from it and, and uh, this guy, Jacob, he's a, he was like a content creator. He um, did uh, YouTube videos on kind of tearing apart like bad like, internet stories. Like I think they're called like creepy pastas. And he kind of like kind of riff on them with his friends. And I used to think it was really funny. And I remember I was watching his videos before I went to this appointment. And I was I was walking up the high street to get back to the station. I saw him walking down opposite me. I thought like kind of made eye contact. I kind of stood there and I thought, oh, wow, that's the guy I was listening to on YouTube like two hours ago. And I'm I'm quite a passive person, like, in real life. And I did something I never really would have done. And I kind of waited about 20 seconds, and I decided to kind of follow him. <laughs> so I followed him all the way down the high street. And I, caught, <laughs> I caught up with him. <laughs> I caught up with him about, like, 200 meters later. And I was like, excuse me, are you... Um, and his channel name was, like, Michael Loire. And I called him Jacob. I was like, are you Jacob from uh, this channel? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I kind of gave him a hug. And I was like... I was watching you on YouTube this morning and we kind of had like a, a little chat. And I think I was actually the first fan to have ever met him. It was really cool. And um, he was uh, working at, uh, I think at the time, uh, Canterbury Tales, which was this, um, it's quite a famous attraction, actually. It's kind of this indoor kind of tour around like old English um, kind of folklore and things like that. So um, I think a few days later, I, uh, I went back. And at the time he was... Um, working on making this movie called Darkland. And I actually had like a pretty decent camera. So I kind of went up to see him and was like, hey, if, you, know, you need my camera as like a, a backup. Um, I'll be more happy to kind of lend it to you and maybe like help you out on the project. And he was like, yeah, definitely. So um, I kind of, well, we, we filmed it. Um, it's sort of, it keeps being developed. So it's not it's not um, out at the moment, but it's still kind of slowly getting to a state where it's, uh, it's watchable. And that makes it sound like it's really bad. It isn't, it's very good. Um, but doing that kind of made me meet like a lot of people, like more of the team from uh, like his friends who we made uh, the the um, uh, or content with, and um, so from becoming a fan uh, of his, I've now developed to kind of being you know a business partner. Like we uh, kind of do media stuff together sometimes, like work on uh, films and short films and things like that, and. Um, so most of my social interactions are going to see him and like, you know, we have ridiculously strong coffee and kind of snowball ideas and uh, write some stuff. And that's kind of the majority of um, my social interaction. I don't really have many, many friends. I have a couple of really good ones, but uh, I don't really, I don't really know many people. You know, that is something that uh, as I, as I sit in my living room uh, with an undescribed level of, of clothing on, Feeding this baby uh, a bottle at the same time that I interview someone all the way across the world. Um, it's really cool that... It's such a stupid word to use, but whatever. It's really cool <laughs> that uh, YouTube has sort of opened this door for individual people to get involved in creating content that other people can enjoy and can even become something that you work on together with other people you can go from being a fan to realizing someone lives near you and just collaborating together in real life and forming these like working friendships that are uh you know not hmm. everybody has like this short list of friends that are just like people you really invest your life into uh, but i can definitely relate to that and just the the fact that people can connect through this thing is is pretty incredible. Definitely. So where do we go from there? That was a great look into your uh, a very a very close and personal look into your your social life. A, a quiet man who who was brave enough to to stalk and reach <laughs> out to in a complete break from character uh, to to hunt down. <laughs> someone he recognized as or just someone who inspired him that's pretty neat you know what you guys if you're if you feel inspired right now just feel free to stalk us as long as you just come up and actually introduce yourself for a few seconds <laughs> 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 All right. that would totally make my day um so where do we go from here that was a that was a great little talk I'm a little bit distracted because I'm 
I'm feeding this. She's almost six months old. This oh, is my her. second daughter, Zoe. A lovely and name as well. Yes, she is just so full of life. <laughs> and her her mom has been such a blessing to me. Oh, perfect thing to ask. Now that you've been so candid with us about your social life, uh, let's talk about the love life. So, <laughs> I mean, you. I'm assuming that you have... You know, functional parts, desires, motivations, and goals. So, uh, just tell us a little bit about whatever you feel like sharing. Oh, well, um, I love life as well. Um, I don't really meet many people, but um, there are possibly some some developments, perhaps. Couldn't possibly say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've never really been one for kind of... I don't know. Relationships in general, like I've had kind of a couple of really rubbish ones. And um, I think I'm at probably a point in my life where I think I'd really like kind of like a relationship, but I probably realistically, um, I guess, shouldn't. Probably not the right word, but um, I feel like maybe I shouldn't just because, you know, I, I kind of notice small things like you know, month to month, I'm kind of, I want to be something else. I want to be someone else. I want to work on different things. And I think because I kind of keep, I don't know, like, sounds really pretentious, but I guess like kind of my, uh, the things I kind of want to be keep evolving. I think that if I kind of settle or choose to settle with someone now, I might in a few years be somebody who, you know, is completely different. I mean, obviously I don't know, like maybe, you know, I'd find someone, you know, tomorrow and it'll be perfect forever but i think um i'm kind of taking a kind of back seat to the whole thing it's like if something happens sure but i don't really think i'm necessarily out really looking for anything of any in any case that makes perfect sense as i talk over the baby who is complaining i'm not sure exactly yes more more food surprising no one <laughs> you are a chunky girl you are a chunky princess and you're adorable um what was i oh right so that makes complete sense. You don't want to just go, you know, on the prowl for a woman because you feel like you have some kind of need. <laughs> uh, you you show this this refreshing quality of being aware of yourself, maybe a bit more self aware than you need to be, uh, because mm -hmm. the the person that you truly are is something that that you seem to share pretty openly. With your, with your close friends, just the impression that I get. And I am convinced that this poor, this poor young woman who just falls in love with you for no damn reason, which is always the way it is, um, she's just going to love you for exactly who you are and, and it doesn't matter like what you're interested in or what you do. One of the things that my wife like actually worries about constantly, you'll find this as well, once the ladies start talking to you about things, is that mm. they are constantly worrying about random stuff. <laughs> and one of the mm. things that my wife worries about <laughs> is I'm always getting super interested in something and just completely like pouring my time and effort and focus into it and then I'll just immediately drop it at some random point and just not go back to it <laughs> and she's like you know is that gonna happen to me and I'm like hey I'm still with you and War Thunder so you know there's <laughs> you can rest assured and I, you know I tell her that there's just nobody else. I, I grew up convinced that there was just one specific woman for me, and it was just a matter of finding out who she was. And I, I mm -hmm. feel that's the same way for you. So you don't have to. It's not just a numbers game. You can feel comfortable mm. feeling like it's not time to reach out and, and go looking for something that might not fly toward you. Um, and at the same time, you can be broadsided at any moment by some poor <laughs> random girl who will just fall madly in love with you for no damn reason. So mm. you're in a perfectly comfortable place, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's actually like a really, really nice perspective. Actually, that's really sweet as well, um, where you looked at it. And that's a really good way to look at it. Because, yeah, it's like, um, you know, I kind of feel the same. I feel like there is, there is one person, you know, and if... Um, you know, there's 
I don't know how to really describe it, because I'm not really in this situation very much. But I kind of like... Hmm, a good way to kind of put it. But I feel you just kind of... You just kind of know. It's like this This is how it's meant to be. And with just just this person. Like this is this is it. Like nothing else like can really come close. It's like this this is what I thought I always wanted and it's what I still want, kinda. Of. Like yeah. I, I really like that that kind of perspective on it. You are speaking dangerous words, sir. Romantic girls <laughs> hearts are beating and you know, the the two or three girls that actually <laughs> managed to watch this are, are going to be in danger of, of being very affected by what you're saying. Uh, and I, hax, I actually have an entire video that talks about it. It's my Valentine's Day special. It talks about how I met my wife, and I, I, I had the most disgustingly, like, beautiful and perfect courtship with, with my wife uh, that she wasn't even aware that uh, the first time I saw her, I knew I was going to marry her. But that's, it's sickening, oh. uh, but, but I'm just saying that it happens. So you you have a license to be a to be a an optimistic romantic. Okay, well, whew, floaty now. Um, <laughs> let's. Where do we go from that one? That was a nice little conversation. So we talked some about your past. Uh, we talked about your social life and and the love life, which is a, a beautiful, hopeless romance at this point. And uh, <laughs> masking all kinds of insecurity, I'm sure. Uh, but but uh, let us press onward to the goal, which is your future. You you have been very very clear about where you are now. Uh, what are you looking forward to in your near future? Well, I'm not too sure, really, and. I think I really like kind of doing stuff online, and uh, I like I like kind of talking. And one thing I've always kind of wanted to do is maybe kind of do uh, like audio books or things like that. So I, I like I've always liked reading, and um, please do that. I'd quite like to do. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd quite like to do something like that as a career in the future, and or just um, do something that that kind of helps helps people. The one thing I've always kind of wanted to be. Um, is maybe like do kind of counselling. Is uh, uh even kind of growing up, even when I probably wasn't an age where I should have kind of been trying to tell people, you know, how to feel better. Like I, I don't think I can do that even now. But I, I always kind of like talking to someone, and then afterwards they you maybe kind of see it in a different way. And thank thank you for that. I, that that feeling just always made me really like really happy. And I'd always kind of like to do counselling. And in in my spare time, like um. I'm a bit kind of burnt out with anything else I'm doing. There's this website called um, Seven Cups, I think it's still called. And uh, basically you can kind of sign up and uh, go through like a mini course. And you can become like a kind of online kind of drop-in counsellor. And people from all over the world can kind of come in and just like have a chat with you. And it's kind of if they've got kind of relationship problems, they have problems at home, you know, you can just kind of talk for like, you know, maybe like a day, maybe like 10 minutes, maybe like an hour. And... Um, I always really enjoy doing that because you get to meet some people you'd never otherwise uh, meet. I think um, it's one one kind of meeting, uh, well, chat with someone I never, I really forget. Is um, there was this one person from uh, the Middle East, I think, um, and they were they're tra- transgender, and obviously they in that being in that position is really really difficult, especially in that area. And they're kind of going through like their life and um, you know how difficult everything is, and it's like I would never have had the opportunity to meet this person or somebody like that and it's just it's such a just a it's it's a perspective i can't really justify in words really it's just and kind of talking to people like that hearing people's stories and kind of hopefully making people feel a little better that's one of the things i kind of get the most kind of joy out of i've always really liked that i think i guess in some kind of vague way it translates to what i'm doing um with war thunder at the moment i like kind of uh, helping people, like helping people with the game, and like I, I really love the game, probably more than I should. But um, if just like a couple of people watch one of my videos, um, because it, it it's never really been about kind of having a huge audience or all the views, and it's like 
if a couple of people watch um, the videos and enjoy the game more because maybe uh, maybe they were struggling with something and they're you know hopefully something I've said has made them think oh actually yeah that's that's I'll try that and if that kind of works and somebody enjoys the game more because of a video that I've made it's like that's that's all I really want from it and I think that kind of um, it probably sounds weird putting it in this way but like that kind of feedback loop with something that I'm kind of doing or like a con- content that I'm making I I really like and I think whatever field or, or something I end up doing if I can kind of just help people with something or just you know make someone's day a bit better then that's that's really what I want to do so uh, growing up um, my dad kind of always taught me to just well be nice and be polite so I always always try to like um, at crossing the road you kind of put your hand up to thank a car for stopping for you and like he'd always kind of teach me to do things like that and um, I could always like even when I was when I was younger and I guess like being a kid and thanking someone like the, the driver would always kind of like smile and put their hand up back so I guess it was like quite, quite cute back then and like seeing like a kind of simple thing that I was doing was making somebody else like smile I was like I, even when I was at a young age I was like I really like that I want to do that I don't care kind of what it is it's just that's the kind of thing I want to I want to get I think kind of growing up I kind of um I kept that in my head and yeah I think something along those lines if I can kind of achieve that reaction from someone in whatever kind of way it is that's that's really what I want to aim for I think that is a very reasonable and productive way to to look at life and productivity to do things that make other people's lives better is by far more rewarding than than seeking after the carnal pleasures of of <laughs> of satisfying yourself and it also has the side effect of making you care about the mm. effect you have on other people. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna show up anyway. Uh, how do you deal with a negativity from other people? Um, I do get some kind of negative comments, and usually I kind of approach it like one or two ways. Like if it's something that I think you know I can kind of reason with the person, like maybe if I've said something they don't agree with and they're being quite hostile about it, I will try and be quite forthcoming and say well like you know this is why i think this thing and like you know by all means you know if if you think i'm wrong it's okay to disagree but like this i I kind of try and justify it i think like why i kind of think the way i do but if it's something that's just kind of someone being unpleasant i will just kind of try and ignore it but it does it does kind of obviously get to me there's like a negative comment and it's always that annoying kind of thing it's like you read 10 nice comments and you get one bad one and that's the one you always focus on I think it's just kind of human nature to do that, and it's always always kind of annoying. Um, but the way I kind of get around it uh, sometimes is that generally the effect of like a negative comment seems to be lessened after time has passed. So like, I usually only read my comments. Um, I read them a bit straight away because usually it's kind of people I know who who like to watch the videos early and then kind of like you know heart their comments and like them and things like that. But for everyone else, I kind of leave it a bit. Because if there's like a negative comment like a week after the video, I have like less attachment to it, so it doesn't kind of um, get to me as much. So that's that's generally what I do um, through that, and in in game as well. Like uh, if I'm having a pretty good day in game, I, I do kind of get messages from people saying, um, you know, quite unpleasant things. I probably don't need to repeat. Um, but even with those people, like. Um, I think probably being a content creator has helped. I think like probably growing up and being a teenager, I probably tried to um, combat some people in the, in the DMs. But but now, kind of being older and you know, being kind of you know, like a like a content creator, I kind of you know I, I never like engaging like that. I think it's really reductive and just doesn't doesn't help. So I I try and be as level headed as I can with people like that. And the reason why I like doing it is that I've had I think two times now someone's uh have been quite cross at me um, in the PMs and I've kind of tried to be really reasonable and a couple of days later they've actually messaged back and said hey I'm, I'm really sorry I was like in a really bad mood and I've actually kind of made a couple of odd friends by doing that so I think that's kind of always the best way to go like uh, this sounds like I, I it always sounds kind of uh, cringy to put it like this, but 
a motto that I, I really like is um, the best way to destroy your enemies is to make them your friend, or try to. Because it's like... Um, a, a good example, actually, like a, a while ago, um, I don't need to do, do any names, it's all completely fine now, but there was um, a content creator who I didn't really get on with for a brief period. And um, Tell me more you know, about Slick B. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Slick. <laughs> right, carry on. But, I think he would appreciate that joke. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, so uh, I kind of talk about them, kind of not not directly, but kind of mention them a bit. And uh, my people, kind of like on stream, people would kind of maybe know who I was talking about, but they would kind of, you know, obviously not uh, like this other person I was talking about. And in return, probably vice versa happened. Like their their kind of following probably didn't like me for the same reason. But I, so I could have just kind of kept trying to, you know, battle that, I guess. But we just kind of sat down uh, one evening and just talked about it. And we realized that actually, you know, we're just, we're friends, aren't we? Why are we, why are we like this? We're, we're kind of, we're really good friends now still. And that, that kind of philosophy was at the back of my head. It's like, you know, it's like an analogy, but like, it's like if you have like an army, like two armies fighting each other. And, you know, if the people, you know, leading those armies kind of shake hands and become friends, everyone kind of stops and there's no kind of negativity coming from that. And that's kind of the way I try and approach stuff is through that mentality. And uh <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's uh that's what I kind of try and approach things in the game with because War Thunder like the player based I think I mean my my theory with it is is that War Thunder is quite like an quite an ego kind of focused environment, and the way everyone kind of presents themselves is that you know I think everybody thinks they're the best player in their particular group of friends or whatever who plays, so you know you get a a lot of kind of um, backseat gaming and people trying to kind of you know tell people how how to play the game when they probably shouldn't be doing it, and. Um, that kind of harbors a lot of uh, just negative air, I think, because people always argue with each other. People are very opinionated. I mean, that's not like inherently a bad thing, but um, when people die uh, in the game, it's the first thing that comes to their head is like, "Oh, that's you know, stupid game." Blah blah blah. Uh, it's never like I, don't, I feel people rarely acknowledge that um, maybe someone was better than they were or they made a mistake. So that kind of becomes like a massive circle jerk and I think the kind of gaijin hatred doesn't really help towards that and um, so I feel like that's quite kind of prevalent in the community overall so you do get a fair bit of negativity but I mean the, my approach probably isn't the best way because um, I'm, I'm fully aware that the way I kind of approach things is kind of uh, some certain people don't don't like it because it can come across as I guess uh, quite pretentious and like a uh, I don't really know how to to kind of contextualize it, but I, I get the impression some people think that I think that I'm I'm better than other people because it's like I'm saying, well, like, oh, I'm trying to make this situation better instead of kind of arguing. And I think some people kind of don't kind of like that perspective, and I can kind of appreciate that it might come across that way. And that's something I always try and avoid. Um, but I think I feel in talking about it, it just it is kind of um, a bit hard to avoid that. But um. Yeah, uh, I, I feel the people who dislike me the most are people that don't like my approach. I think people probably think I'm a bit too uncontroversial and a bit kind of too positive. And maybe that's just because it's so alien in this community from like uh, from most people. Obviously, there are people who are try and be as positive as possible and just kind of have a good time, um, whether they're you know, making videos or just playing the game. But um, I feel. A lot of people kind of don't like it. Maybe it's a bit kind of too airy fairy for like the whole kind of uh, community as a whole. Um, I feel there's there's probably the most hostility I get is from that kind of camp of people, and I don't really think there's any way to kind of combat that apart from you know just trying to talk to them. But uh, I don't really think uh, 
Now, I've tried before, really, and uh, it, there's no change in people's minds. Some people will just dislike me indefinitely, I think. But, you know, that's okay. Like, I, I can't expect to, you know, be friends with everyone. Much I try to be, but, um, yeah, it's just not always, not always going to be possible. You know, that makes complete sense as uh, I deal with an actual whining baby in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings all, post-production Toshio here, and this is the point at the interview when the baby went into nuclear mode, so <laughs> apologies for the baby sounds in the background, but, well, I wanted to keep the authenticity of that intact and the last thing that I said to Oxy was uh, what he was telling me reminds me of a proverb that goes like this. And it's one of the contradictions in the Bible, just so you know. It says, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. And it also says, right after that, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So, what was it saying there? Uh, I think it's saying that you can provide this community service to an idiot. And we're using the classical sense of the word idiot here. Not an insult, but just a way of identifying someone that doesn't know something. And you can help that person out by telling them what's up in in a good and helpful way that's, you know, possibly even considerate of their feelings and their position. And at the same time, if you do set someone straight, let someone know the way things are, let them know that they're wrong in the way they were thinking, uh, they could just make a fool out of you. So you got to kind of decide whether you're going to put your neck out there or just let someone carry on being an idiot because all they do is mock truth and that was about the point where we wrapped up the interview so i'll jump into where oxy is wrapping things up there was just a wailing baby girl in my background audio so <laughs> we'll cut it off there yeah well uh i'm tom oxy uh thank you very much for listening um to me talk about stuff and uh i will probably see all of you in game or bump into you somewhere so yeah uh thank you uh very much for the opportunity to um have this chat and uh i'm sure we will be talking again uh, at some point soon so uh yeah i will say goodbye <laughs>